And I have one person coming this way. Just one person. This is a preacher who preached at the crusade. Very powerful preacher. First day, five people gave their lives to Christ. Second day, you let me use a correct number which is easier to calculate. Ten people gave their lives to Christ first day. Second day, another ten. Third day, last day, another ten. How many people are giving their lives to Christ? Yes. So in one revival, 30 people have given their lives to Christ. A three-day revival. And they have come to join the church. 30 people. Big thanksgiving. They are thanking God that this preacher has done a very good job. Another guy stands, didn't do crusade, didn't do revival. He had a congregation of just 30 people. Just 30. Now, she had a congregation, I cannot have another person here. Just one person. She had a congregation of 100 people already. And she did three day crusade. She had 30 people in that. So the whole year, I mean, why had Remember that these people, some will slip out. Let's maintain the one thirty for the whole year, why This man has a congregation of just 30 people. He discipled each and every one of them to go out and make just one disciple. Just one. For the year. They came back with how many? 30 more. Both of them have done well. Second year, she goes out to preach again. Another maximum 30 people have joined the church. Second year, they disciple how many people now? Every one of the 60 goes out for the year, brings in one. How many people does he have now? How many people does she have? Third year, she goes out, she preaches. Whole year, she has 30 people. Added to the one, how many will they be? Third year, how many people are here already? They are all disciples to go and bring one for the year. End of third year, how many does he have? How many does she have? Fourth year, <laughs> she goes to preach, she gets 30 people, plus the ones tonight, how many? Fourth year, how many people here? How many people here already? They go out, bring one person each. How many do they have? So Christ, when he came on the scene, he realized that preaching to the crowd should only be in parables. But disciple, for them to go and make one one and bring, was the way to go. It was the people that hear the parables, they will leave. And so in John 6, 66, going, he asked, Will you also leave? When he was feeding them, they were enjoying it. But when he started saying the hard things, he started leaving. And as we also leave my disciples. Look, I love crusades. Don't, don't get me wrong. I love crusades. I love revivals. In fact, in two weeks I'm having another revival. <laughs> but the real way to go is discipleship. If you combine the two, you make it fast and you cause a change in the kingdom. If you just concentrate
concentrate on preaching and doing that. No, in preaching and causing and uh, making crusades, a lot of money goes into it. In discipleship, nothing. It is just the person that is going to present and bring another person in. Over time, the church grows. And that is why Christ just concentrated on 12 people. Even though he lost one, the 11 made an impact such that today Christianity has spread. The reason why today Christianity has Wondering whether to use become stagnant or slow down. Slow down. Who wants to slow down? Stagnated. Stagnated means they are not going. That's why I was wondering whether to use stagnated or slow down. But the reason why Christianity is not running at the speed that it was running in the old age when Christ just left the scene is because we have left discipleship. And we have gone into crusades and revivals. If we start going back to discipleship, we will cause a change. And we will cause a change in that small corner where we are. And people will give their lives to Christ. We want to enter into prayer. And I intentionally wanted to end on this sort of note. A very senior Presbyterian minister went to a world conference to preach about new religious movements. And this was in a place where there were a lot of Muslims. On a Friday night, these people were enjoying themselves. The young guys were enjoying themselves. Muslims are not supposed to drink, but they drank, got boozed, messed the place up, the hotel that they were in. That evening, this Ghanaian Presbyterian minister went out, carried those who are boost into the animals, washed them up, put them in bed, and then when he had messed up, he went and he cleaned up the whole place. The following day, three staunch Muslims came to him and said, We want to be Christians. Because of what you have done. You didn't preach anywhere, but your action alone has decided that we want to be Christians today. Because these people are afraid that when they declare that they are Christians, they will be killed. They are Christians secretly and they exchange correspondence with this minister. Have to know. Read the Bible, have confessed Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. All because somebody did a small action to disciple others. What are you doing to disciple others? How can we cause a change in the place where you are? Close your eyes and let us pray. See, see you. Jesus. See, see you.
you just want to come before the Lord in whatever posture you want. Say a person you are, a a person you a person you a person you a person whatever you want to do. But the person who put down the point of passion is around it. I want to be a disciple. I want to be a disciple. I just don't want to be a follower. I want to be a disciple. A disciple who is causing change. A disciple who is causing change. You want to pray that way? Lord, help me to be a disciple. Help me to be a disciple. I don't know about you, but the things that the world is bringing today, if we do not stand up, we cannot cause that change. You want to cause a change in the kingdom. You want to cause a change in the world. And you want to ask God that God help me to be a change maker. And a game changer. This is the way you are playing that game. But I want to change that game. I want to change that game. But some fire, but some fire, but some fire, but some fire. I want to change that game of God. I want to change that game of God. I want to change that game of God. children 
Your younger ones will they know the Lord? They don't be able, you know what you are doing now that will cause the next generation to either know the Lord or not know the Lord. You want to stand to your feet now. This is just what I want us to pray about. And you want to ask that Lord, if there's anything I'm doing, I remember the next generation I ever after me, they will not know the Lord. It is this summer. It is this summer. Let me be a disciple who is pulling the next generation after me, such that all the you know, they will also know the Lord and know the works of the Lord, that they will continue the Christian race. But and then many people are tired and are falling off. You want to pray that prayer? Go before God. This is between you and God. This is between you and God. I don't care if you don't want to shout or you want to pray loud. That is between you and God. But this, this particular moment, it's just a short moment. I didn't come to do a little bit of prayer. It's not for that one. This moment, I just want you to go into yourself. In a return of me. After me, will there be a generation of Gethsemane attendees? After me, will there be a generation of the gospel singers? After me, will there be another generation of the Gadassim Abedhira? After me, will there be a generation of the Gadassim After me, will there be a generation that are going into the hinterlands to preach? After me, will there be a generation that are ready to disciple people even on social media. After me, will there be a generation that are ready to hold the Bible? After me, will there be a generation that will be able to confront the evil that the world is doing? After me, will there be a generation that will say that I do not care what the world is saying, this is a sin? After me, will there be a generation that will call a sin a sin. After me, will there be a generation that can stand tall for God in the midst of all these trials? After me, will there be a generation in my workplace who will not take a bribe? After me, will there be a generation in my church that will be speaking the truth? After me, will there be a generation that knows the Lord and the works that he did. You know what you are doing. And God is calling some of us. Some of us, we have denied the call. Let me go and bury my brother. Let me go and bury my father. Let me go and marry. Let me go and give birth first. Let me go and build my house before I come and follow you. Are you that generation? Are you like Joshua? Who didn't disciple people after it? This thing is deep for me. And that is why Israelites went into the judges, having judges to rule them, because there was no leader. God came to Joshua and said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, Joshua, rise up. But after Joshua, because he couldn't disciple anybody, there was no one to take after him. Who would take after Gethsemane when this generation leaves? When you let to us, when your generation leaves, we want to pray for the next generation. Beloved, this prayer is critical. You want to pray for the next generation. The next generation. That technology may be spared, but we want to pray for them. You can lock your phone with the, the most weird password. An eight year old will pick it and back, back, back again. That is the generation that is coming. You want to pray for that generation? Go before God. 
pray for this generation. The devil is stealing our generation. The generation after us, the devil is stealing them. We are going to pray for that generation. This is, this is a, 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 a super moment that you need to go before God. Pray for that generation. Pray for them. How can we get there? How can we transform the generation after us? Let Jesus know how the generation after him will be. He knew it. He knew it. Because he had discipled people. He was pouring into them. Second Timothy 2 2. Go and do the same and teach the things that you learned from me in the presence of many witnesses. Teach it to other faithful. The next generation must be faithful. Other faithful people. Who are the faithful ones that you have picked? And be careful even the people that you are picking. Remember I told you Christ went for an all night selected and the devil was part. Who are the people you are selecting to disciple? To continue that yeah, 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 yeah. who are the people you are selecting? Pray over the people's head. Over the person who is selecting them to disciple them. Pray over their heads now. You know their names, mention their names. This is, this is between you and God. This is a deep thing I want us to enter into. But pray for us. Not saying that people are offering in some kind. There should be a touch. There should be a hand that is touching them, a hand that is transforming them, a hand that is taking them from the, the place that they are to another level. There should be that hand. Oh God, use me as a person. You want to pray that prayer, Lord, use me as a vessel of change. Use me as a vessel of change. Use me as a vessel of change. I have some five minutes to go. I just want us to enter into this soul as a prayer.
let us be the one that you find. You want to get into the world, but you have to do it through humanity.
a prayer topic. For me, it now open. Just make it a prayer that God will use you for whatever you want to do. And even as you are there, as you walk with Him alone, as you talk with Him alone, as an individual, I believe He's going to drop things into your spirit. He's going to give you further direction. And as He leads you forward, and you pray. Please.
introduce to you the second minister, associate minister, Prince of Peace, Mama. I just want you to
especially the Prince of Peace congregation. And just before you left, I saw, I met a few of you, and I told them that, look, whilst in Abukubi, don't forget to pray for me. Because I realized that I need a lot of prayer. If I had my own way, I would have been with you. But I'm with you in spirit. And it's a joy for me to be with you this afternoon to share a few things with you. I also believe you are here not just to intercede for the church and all our issues, but also to lay your needs before the Lord. I don't know which one is the priority. Which one is the priority? Your personal needs or intercede? Which one is the priority? Both, eh? Yeah, okay. But I want to assure you that our God is faithful. Whatever you are going through, the God that we serve is very faithful. He is the God who has asked us to call upon Him in time of need, and He will answer us. And he's not saying he'll just answer us. But then he goes on to say that he will also tell us great and hidden things that we don't even know. And so God is giving you the assurance that whilst you are here with your needs, there are certain things that you even need that you don't know. And God is giving you the assurance that even the things you don't know you need. The things you are not asking for, he's made a provision to provide for you. Hallelujah. Amen. But we must also understand that God's promises always come with conditions. God expects us to live a certain type of life. We need to have a certain relationship with him so that when we pray, he can hear us. For some of us, we think that praying with much oratory, we think memorizing and repeating certain words and sentences and phrases, shouting and going on an emotional, spiritual flight makes our prayers powerful. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Yes, these things are very important. Sometimes we have to pray with passion. Sometimes we have to shout, we have to scream. But then, when we apply these things properly, when we apply them well, then the Bible makes us understand that the prayer of the righteous man availeth much. For some of us, our lifestyles make so much noise that God cannot hear our prayers. For some of us, our hands are already so full with blessings from the devil. Our hands are so full with the things that we ourselves think we need and want and have acquired fair or foul meals. That our hands are so full that God cannot find space to place the answers to our prayers. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, Sometimes you need to empty out. Let go and let God take over your life. He knows what you need. He knows your wants. Don't go and get what you think you need, fair of how many, and expect him to rubber stamp. This is the God who has promised us that Nothing good will he withhold from us. He knows us through and through. 
I have always said that before I was formed in my mother's womb, God knew me and has appointed me. He has charted my life's plan for me. And so at every stage, what he has planned for me, he will release into my life. My life's charts, you know, roadmap is not the same as somebody else. And so somebody will get something in the morning, some in the afternoon, maybe I'll get it in the evening, but at the end of it all, I have got it. Hallelujah. Last Sunday, I was talking to the couples, uh, couples, uh, how do you call them? Couples? Couples Fellowship, yes, I was there and I was contributing to the discussions and I was telling them that, look, life in marriage is not a race. It's not a race at all. Just focus and set your goal and do the right things. And every stage of your life, God will provide for you. Hallelujah. Amen. And I was giving them an example that when we first got married, some of my friends, you know, those we grew up with, some of them were working at customs and they had money. And so those early years, they built houses. And I remember very well that there was one of my friends who built a house. We went there for the house warming. And Mama said, hey, no oh, man. And I told her, watch it. Our time will come. Hallelujah. Today, if you dash me that house, I will not take it. Because I have a nicer one and a better one. Yeah. Hallelujah. That is how God has his things. We must understand that God loves us so much. And one thing that I know, nobody comes into the presence of God with a pure heart and goes back without seeing God. Because the Beatitude says that blessed are the pure in spirit for they shall see God. When you come into your presence with a pure heart, surely you will see God. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, as you call on him, in these few days that you are here, may he hear your prayer. Amen. May he answer you. Amen. May he tell you great and wonderful things that will blow your mind. My prayer is that a year by this time, when you gather here again, May you have a testimony. Amen. Not just a testimony, but I want to see you as a living miracle of the Lord. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, the Lord, the theme for this year's Gethsemane Annual Retreat is Game Changers and Change Makers through Discipleship. I also want to say that one of the most difficult types of leadership is change leadership. Change makers or change leaders are people who want to transform situations for the better. <coughs> game changers, game leaders are people who are not complacent. They are not conformist. People who are not comfortable with the way we have always done things and move and work for a change. They bring about transformation. To be a game changer through discipleship is to, with the help of the Holy Spirit, work and help transform people's lives and bring them to becoming disciples of Jesus Christ. And there are so many ways that we can do this. It's not my intention to go through that because I'm not here to give a speech or a talk. I'm here to greet and I'm greeting. <laughs> Hallelujah. So it's my prayer that as you wait upon the Lord, as you receive fresh oil for fresh anointing, may you go and be game changers. May you go and make disciples for the Lord. May the Lord use you mightily to depopulate hell 
and to populate heaven. And as you do this, the Lord's favor will follow you all the days of your lives. This is the work God wants us to do. To go make disciples of all nations. And what I've always told my colleague ministers, God's work done God's way does not lack God's provisions. Amen. If this is the work God wants us to do and you do it in diligently, He will provide for you. Oh, yeah. He will provide for you. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord's blessing be upon you. Amen. May the Lord find favor with you. Amen. As you put your petitions before him, may he hear you and answer you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we want to say once again, thank you so much for your word. Your word also give, always gives us hope. into your hands, Lord. As they wait at your feet, as they call upon your name, glorify yourself, Father. Glorify yourself. Change destinies. Open the floodgates of your heavens and pour your blessings upon them. This is my prayer for them. In Jesus' name. I know his schedule is tight. Um, the whole week he, he was out of office doing some other jobs. And then Saturday rest more. That one too will not allow you to rest. It's good you pass by. Because if you had not passed by, we would have tormented you with it. Oh, the other one. The last time he came up there, he looked at the way people were looking at his face. His face. When he said he was not showing because he's not being invited. You have seen Pepe. <laughs> Let us welcome from the Worship House Chapel, Reverend David Comey. Come, let's fit into that. <laughs> <laughs> 